I sometimes wonder what direction my painting would have gone in if I hadn't walked into that shoemaker shop during open studios in the Cutler Mills. But I think as a painter, I'm always filtering imagery. When sometimes I'm struck by the look of something, seemingly out of the blue, it's probably because it's been fermenting in the back of my mind for a while. It's sort of like I've just been waiting to see it, and then suddenly it's there. So when I first saw the machinery in the shop, I immediately felt I needed to paint it. But I was involved in working on a series of paintings for another show at the time, so I just kept it in the back of my mind for a year. And then the open studios came around again. This time I brought my camera and asked the owner of the shop, Tim Noonan, if I could photograph his machines. Later I asked him if he found it strange that I would find inspiration in the tools of his trade. No, not at all. My, my father's an artist. Well, he's long passed on, but he was an artist and he you get know, inspiration from anywhere. I, I'm not an artist, so to speak, but people do call me an artist in a lot yeah. of ways. What I make is called a Goodyear welt shoe, and uh, to do a Goodyear welt you need specific machines, and a Goodyear welt factory will still have these types of machines in their shop. I didn't really even want to know what these machines did. When I first saw this machine, there was no shoe in here, so I really had no idea that it fit together like this, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, because I just love this part of the machine and I was able to isolate it and shoot it from above and make a painting of it. In fact, I know very little about how to make a shoe with any of these machines, if anything at all. And I think that has been helpful as far as developing the paintings as more iconic images of machines. I actually wasn't even sure if I should come back here after the first time I took pictures once I started working on the paintings because I wanted to keep the train of thought I was coming up with in the studio without being distracted by the reality of the machines. But I'm glad I did because every time I came back I saw new things like these little angel forms on the wall here. Then I'd see entirely new uh, machines, or the same machine from a different angle. I actually did two separate paintings of this one machine. One I had propped in very tightly on this part, and this part became very monumental and very centered. And then I did another painting of the entire machine which became very much like a totem. And it was maybe a couple of years later, so the whole feel of the machine was different. It really added to my stock of imagery to come back here every year. And even now when I come back, I can see new images that I want to paint and new things that inspire me. And I feel like I could paint in this studio here forever. I never run out of material. When I got back to my studio and started looking at the photographs, I got pretty excited about the imagery and I decided that this would be my next series of paintings. So I began working on what would end up being dozens of studies. I worked in charcoal, oil pastel, acrylic, watercolor, working out what I wanted to take from the imagery and I began to see relationships between the different machines and different views of the machines and started playing with the idea of presenting them in triptych form. That led me to looking at medieval imagery because I saw similarities between the tight integrated structure of the medieval iconography and the complexity of the machines. Each was as interlocked as a puzzle. No piece could be taken out without compromising the whole. I began to see the paintings as machines, and the machines as icons. Other images I had stored away began to suggest themselves. Several years ago I found three scrapbooks with photographs from the Ukraine 
during World War I, and always wanted to do something with the powerful images I found in them. So I began to bring in that imagery as I developed my studies. After drawing sometimes many images of the same machine, I began to decide which ones that I wanted to turn into paintings. It was then when I moved out to my painting studio and began to work on canvas. Over the next few years, I worked on the paintings and the studies simultaneously, jumping back and forth from one to the other, and eventually developed this series of paintings, which I called St. Hugh's Bones or the Shoemaker Series. <laughs> 